Hey friends, so thanks for tuning in today. I have a special guest with me this morning. Uh, he's a, a dear friend, one of my mentors, and his name is Dr. Perry Nicholson. My friend, how are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you very much for having me on the show and a big heartfelt hi, hello, and welcome to everyone watching. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, I was looking and it was a little over four years ago we actually met the first time and that was for my first interview with you at Evan Sheets' place. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I look at that now and I'm like, it feels like uh, yesterday. It's amazing how fast time has gone by, but also, you know, it's really wonderful to see you know, your progression of where you are and your level of success from that standpoint. So before we even begin, I just want to say how happy I am for you on that and how thrilled I am for you of what you've been able to take out into the world and help a lot of people. Well, thank you very, very much for that. It's uh, at the time I met you, I wasn't even planning to do any of this education stuff uh, that I'm doing now. And it just I mean, unfolded. How it, works. Yeah. it unfolded very shortly after, like a couple months after that was when it kind of uh, it started up. So that's how the universe works, man. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, I thought of you right away. I've been thinking about doing this mindset for success type of interview series for a while because you know, there's so many people out there who are doing things. Um, and, and some of them I'm friends with, you know, like you uh, have been a great friend. I'm so supportive of all my work and just as a human being uh, helping me at times. I appreciate that very much, very much. But you've done some, just some incredible things. And what I love about, one of the things I love about what you're doing is, uh, besides the fact that, you know, you are followed and uh, uh, um, people are, many 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 people seeking you out to come and teach them is the the level of impact you're having on people's lives is absolutely astounding mm -hmm. and so i would say in, from my view and i know from many others who are uh, fans of yours they're going to look and they're saying man this is this is looks like a successful dude so what's going yeah. on in this guy's mind uh how did it what's it how do you let me start with this question when you look at success how do you define it in, in your terms? What does it mean to you? And how would, what do you consider success to be? Man, that's a good question. I, I could probably go on for like an hour on that one. Um, that's, that's, a, that's an important point to make is that you have to define what does success actually mean for you? Because it's different. I think that we have an idea about what success is or what our culture drills into you about success and that's really important because your view of success might be dependent on the environment you've been raised in mm -hmm. uh, from from the country that you live in to the town that you live in to the family and so it can go down to something very very specific um, so i think most of us define success as something like uh, money or wealth right uh, of, of trying to get yourself to a place where oh I've made it, right? Mm -hmm. But I've seen for me, and I think it happens to a lot of people, <clears throat> you're going down a path that's really not your authentic path. And, and you don't know it until you finally get towards the end of it or you make it. And then you say to yourself, that's it. Like, there's got to be something more to this. <clears throat> and uh, for me, success started that way. But I'll be honest with you, uh, I, I never this is an important point in the beginning. I don't think I felt worthy of success. Uh, I'm and, really glad you said that. I keep going. I, and, I have a comment on that in a minute. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I, I read motivational self-help books, right. And I see things, but you're not ready to absorb something until you're ready to, to like understand it and hear it. Right. And I think Anthony Robbins is the one who said it. He says, it's not necessarily that you have a fear of failure. You have a fear of success. And I just sat there for a moment like I got hit by a truck. 
And it, it took me back to something that an early um, person I worked with in the chiropractic field, because I'm a chiropractor by trade originally. And I got out of school, you know, and you have to learn like the ropes. You got to, the way to become successful, quote unquote, is to follow somebody who's already successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he said to me one time when I just kept hitting roadblock after roadblock, it was almost like I was self-sabotaging myself. And he said, listen, you've got what it takes to be successful. I see it. You just got to get out of your own way. And I was mm-hmm. like, man, that's pretty brilliant, right? And the universe and the heart have a strange way of working. I looked at it like, now, why am I struggling so much going down the road? Because I was going down the wrong road, and I think my heart was trying to tell me that. And listen, I'm going to throw enough roadblocks at your way. I'm going to, quote, unquote, just like kick you in the gut, kick your ass, so you finally learn uh, that maybe you need to be looking at it a different way. And I finally did. So it set me on a different path and that different path ultimately led to where I am now because, you know, people think of success, you know, as like a linear thing. Like you're here, you're point A and you need to get to point B. Well, first of all, it's never a straight line. I mean, it's sometimes it's going to be like you're reversing. I mean, you're like all over the place, like a dyslexic success line that's all over the place and it gets jumbled. And then, you get a sense of feeling like lost, right? And uh, for me, a really important thing that helped me was to know that it's okay to go down a different path, even though you don't know where you're going yet. And the idea was that if you want to go from point A to point B, the idea is that not necessarily to hit point B yet, because the dirty little secret is point B always changes. But the, the idea is to just not do A. And I'm like, when you think about it like that, it's like, as long as I'm not doing this, then I'm doing something different. And then that'll change the way you view yourself or the, the way that you view uh, success. And honestly, in the beginning, when I didn't feel worthy, it's because I was comparing myself to everybody else. Mm. Like, I, I'm not good enough, or why would anybody want to listen to what I have to say? And I think it was, you know, Jordan Peterson, who's out right now, who's really popular with work he does had one of my favorite quotes i don't know if i'm going to get it right but you'll get the gist of it he says is that compare yourself to who you were yesterday not to someone else today Mm. so the idea is that your idea of success is can you make yourself just a little bit better than you were yesterday maybe it's just that you're not so much at a miserable place maybe you're not completely happy but hey i'm like one notch up from my misery scale yesterday (laughs) and if you can stay on that path it's definitely a path for people in in pain right yeah then dude that's a win and the sooner you stop comparing yourself to others you will find your authentic self so to answer your question when i just showed i went all over the place but not really is success to me is embracing who you are um love yourself which is really, really important. And then trust that and realize that, hey, it's okay if I'm not like everybody else, which is a big one. And I'm I'm gonna kind of give you now, I may be coming later, but I'm gonna tell you that what my view of success is right now. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was, I learned this, here's the crazy thing, man. You can learn from any person, you can learn from any industry. I was somehow I was on YouTube, brother, right? I'm like, I'm surfing around and I'm on one subject and I went down the white rabbit hole where I don't know how I ended up on this thing. And it was actually something uh, from an ex wrestler that used to be known as uh, Diamond Dallas Page, DDP. Mm -hmm. And he made a program once uh, called DDP Yoga. And his tagline is, it ain't your mama's yoga. Like, you know, (laughs) he he changed it up because, you know, it really helped him recover from like a back injury that was ending his career. And he said something that I was like, dude, you know, just the way that he said it, the authentic way that he said it, it was this. He said, listen, you got three choices that you can take if you want to be successful. Right. And and whatever you view success to be one, you've got you are the best, like 
you're at the top and there can only be one best. You got it? There's like one champion. Yep. So the thing is, is that if you reach that point, you usually find out that it's very hollow and what happens next, or you're not there for very long because somebody wants to knock you off. Mm -hmm. right? So you've got one, the best, very few people that make that. And then number two, you've got everybody else below that who's trying to be the best. And that's a big pool to compete in. You get lost. You're one grain of sand on a beach, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he said, I don't want to be the best and I don't want to be everybody else. And he said to himself, there's one other option and that's the ticket to success. And he said one word. He goes, different. Ah, yeah. He says, be different because then you stand out right but then i thought about that deeper and i thought to myself everybody has that capacity to become successful because everybody is different so nobody is like you so if you can just be the best you so you can be the best but try to be the best of you and be okay with that because you have to have some self-love there. Mm -hmm. When that happens, that's when the universe opens. That's what the universe has been waiting for. And that's when a lot of this good stuff, just like, dude, I don't know what happened. Like all of a sudden this stuff started happening. Yeah. That's, that's when you, you found it, man. You reached that zone. And yes. for me, it came from that where different is just, being you and people have a hard time doing that today because it takes courage it takes strength and not everybody wants you to be you because they get threatened when you're you they want you to be like them or fit into the mold because if you're out here um you know one i can't control that or two what happens is, is that it makes people doubt themselves and then when they right. see your level of success then they start to actually which is sometimes a reflexive thing where they have to elevate themselves up because they can't do it on their own yet. They do it by tearing somebody else down, which is very common today on social media, unfortunately. So sorry, that was a little bit of a long answer, but. <laughs> no, I actually, I love it. And I can relate to a lot of aspects of that. Yeah. Particularly spending, I would, I'm 57 now. So I'd say 48 years thinking I'm not worthy. Right, so that actually caused me to not really change, well, to not do anything different than I had been doing for the longest time. And then I kept struggling and struggling in a lot of different capacities. And then, uh, you know, my the story behind that and why changes occurred, that's, that's when I interview myself someday. But the bottom line is, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, um, you know, once once I became okay with me, even a little bit, but it's like I started to be okay with me. That actually changed right there. That that started some shit happening. I was like, okay, <laughs> I have potential. This is cool. I always knew I wanted to help people. That was the number one thing. I just didn't know how to get to do that. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people, I find them in a spot uh, uh, very similar to what you said. A lot of times... They're not feeling worthy or, you know, they don't deserve the success. They may be afraid of it. Uh, and there's a certain uh, portion of those people who also want to tear others down. And we, we know that happens. It's very sad. But uh, mm -hmm. the resilient ones just ignore that stuff and they move on and do your stuff. Yeah. I love how you talk about – it might even be on your Instagram page or something, but I know you talk about it in the work workshops. Uh, the crazy shit path. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I love that. You know why? Because first of all, you made it up. I mean, it's your, I know that as being your path. And I love that because it, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm so, I was talking with uh, Dr. John Campione yesterday. Oh, it was sure. really fun. We were talking about how the industry and when Tom Myers was saying this the other day too, is like talking about how the industry has molded itself around our lifestyles. Versus, I mean, we didn't have a gym 150 years ago. <laughs> There's no such thing as a bench press. I right. mean, maybe there was, but there wasn't, you know, 
lot of these programs out there because people were moving. So now we come in, you come in, uh, we look at movement. Here's, here's the crazy shit path thing is looking at movement different, right? <laughs> or maybe even moving at all. Yeah, it's so, really funny to think about it. You know, we have all these research things that we do, like, for instance, they're trying to observe the behavior of mice, right? And then they put them in these enclosed environments and have them go through these things. I'm like, dude, you're the rat. I mean, that's what you do every day. You go into your little gym and that's your, that's your wheel. And yeah. then you have here. So you're, you're dictated by the environment that you're in. So that's why a lot of times just uh, what can be helpful for success <clears throat> is changing the environment that you think in or spend mm -hmm. time in. Because that exposes you to a lot of different uh, sensory input and your brain thrives on sensory input. And I always said the further you get away from nature, the more lost you become overall. Mm, and yeah. if you can go outside and just spend some quiet time, which means leave everything that can pick up a signal away from you mm -hmm. uh, and have quiet, which can be very overwhelming and people can go through like almost a sympathetic response because it, it freaks them out quiet um that you can come to some powerful realizations when you're there when you can shut yeah. your mind off and you'll probably find a, a new path that you need to be on and very often you'll come to discover something in your life that's causing you a lot of stress or toxicity and then you'll get to a point hopefully where you have the strength to say you know I don't want to feel like that or be like that anymore, which takes the courage to go towards not A. <laughs> Just don't do A. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like that because I think that the, another thing is it can be an overwhelming vision of like, uh, first of all, it's the unknown ahead of you a lot of times for people. It's like, so how am, how am I going to be successful? It seems like a major, uh, just monumental, overwhelming thing to be there yeah. but at the same time right. if you don't do a but you work towards whatever uh b would be or just away from a and be yeah. a little better each day just a little better each day then that's a compounding thing too because right it's yeah absolutely and like we said there's different levels of success i mean maybe you don't know what success means for your career but maybe you can say, hey, maybe I want to be a little successful in some of my relationships in my life that I have direct control over. So then you, you can build up a momentum of success in a different area of your life. And success breeds success. And you're actually forming the habits and the behaviors of somebody who is a successful person. Yeah. And then that can transcend. And you never know. Maybe when you take the time to show a little bit more kindness or empathy or forgiveness, one to yourself, but to somebody else. You never know what that ripple, it's a butterfly effect, man. It's a ripple that can have such what they call a nonlinear effect. And, you know, and that comes from the world of mathematics where linear is like, if this, then that. You expect the outcome to match the income. But uh, relationships, emotion, success, and particularly physical health is not in pain or nonlinear. That means that it can be something so small, such a pebble, that that's the catalyst that breaks down all these other walls and you just stand there going it's like doing this game called jenga right everything's stacked up and then you find the one and then everything mm -hmm. comes crashing and you're like what the what the hell i had no idea that that was the one and yeah. that's what happens in uh, in life for success you know and yeah i think yeah. that's the key thing is I, <clears throat> it's helped me to also understand and look at neuroscience like the pro how the brain thinks, which I know you know a lot of because you're doing that with Parkinson's, right? And then when, when you look about the, the brain, it, it doesn't like to or cannot make big jumps from A, so, so like stand, I'm standing on one side of the room and I want to get to the other side of the room. I can't teleport there. I can't go to the other side of the room. I have to go one step at a time across the room. And that's the way your brain thinks. It can't. It can see something up here about success, but I like I don't know how to get there. Well, don't worry about it. All you do is just take the next step, right? And then you may change the path to the other side of the room. Maybe you'll go left. Maybe you'll go right. Maybe you'll go a circle. Maybe you go back because you're running into different obstacles that um, 
come your way there. <clears throat> but the thing that freaks out the brain is we try to make too many big changes at once, so we quit. Uh -huh. And the reason being is because your brain hates, it absolutely hates uncertainty. Like if, if it doesn't know what's coming, it literally freaks out like uh -huh. crazy. But here's, here's the, the, the part that's crazy, that it, it hates it, but it craves it. Because you, know, you need to step into things that are the unknown if you're ever going to adapt and change from stuff that hits you. So you need it, but you don't like it right like you want to avoid it but you need it and then yes. that one sometimes gets people to what happens very often is it immobilizes them they don't do anything and they get the, the fear and then when you look at uh uncertainty the brain actually loves to go into things that are uncertain if there is a background of safety to it mm -hmm. sure if there's a background of safety to it so you can take that in two different ways one way is to make sure you have a safe environment in your life with the relationships that surround you mm -hmm. right because if i have a safe tribe that's why social engagement and community is big if i have a great tribe then i'm much more uh safe and likely to venture outside the community because i know my community's got my back if i don't make it that's why it's a classic quote from Jim Rohn, the motivational speaker, is that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So wow. you, know, you might want to look at, if you have a fear of success, maybe it's because you're surrounding yourself with people that are bleeding energy into you and you don't even know it because you don't know what you don't know because it's the only thing you're used to. And sometimes it's success is about not what you do, but what you stop doing. Mm. Not what you do, but what you stop doing get out of your own way kind of thing and change the people that you're around that's a big one but also that social engagement and why i've, I've attached that back to movement is that mother nature has a built-in system to help you deal with uncertainty so it's it's innately designed you don't even have to think about it you just do it because that's mother nature's way of saying it's okay if it's uncertain you can still do it and you'll still get to where you want to go and then that one thing is called play ah uh, so if you play it's uncertain but it's a background to safety because you're playing does that make sense oh totally i well actually that presentation you did at the summit had uh some play yeah in there and that was just really powerful it's really powerful one because in the culture of today you know we don't think of success and play we think of uh, you know, success is, you know, let's go to school, get the didactic stuff, be serious about your freaking grades and compare yourself to this. So you got to get the 1400 on your SAT bullshit. I'm in that stuff now because my son's trying to get into school and it's just disgusting what they do to these kids. And you don't, the, so the element of play, you can't play, that's not serious, man. You can't be successful. Meanwhile, when you get successful, a lot of people just end up playing like crazy, right? So the idea of play is also you gravitate sort towards something that you love in life. And it's not easy to do because society wants to say, you can't do this. How are you going to make a living at that? You need to be like an accountant or an attorney or blah, blah, blah. What are you thinking about going here? But then that comes down to what does success mean? So to me, one, I think you're going to make a hell of a lot more money if that's important to you, if you play and love what you do, because the shit just happens without thinking about it. But also, you're going to realize at that point that along the way on your journey to, to money, that you had a hell of a nice time getting there, you're happier, you have less stress, and then the person who was playing is deep to the core, successful, and usually you don't find much um, value in the money and that's why i see so you see some of these uber successful entrepreneurs like how much is enough that's why things like bill gates his joy for him was never to make a ton of money from microsoft it was just to share that love for the world and now what he does is he's trying to change the world with uh -huh. eradicating these five major diseases particularly starting with malaria that right there is a mindset of success overall um from there because i think that all these super successful people don't take themselves too seriously 
um, and they end up playing. But if you're the other way and you know, some people just work and grind and 70 hour, 80 hour weeks, but that's the important thing that you need to know. You still have to play, but you got to work your ass off and it takes a lot of grind but you don't feel the grind because you're having a good time. And then all of a sudden, you know, eight years later, people say, how did you become an overnight success? Well, well, it took me a long overnight, man. <laughs> right? And you, you just don't stop. And then I, I always say, you know, you know, you're on the right path when everybody's trying to knock you off. You. That's important for you to realize. You know you're on the right path and everybody's trying to knock you off, but that's the more the more haters you get, the more trolls you get. You're gonna get that because you're standing up for something. Mm -hmm. You're embracing something and you're believing in yourself. And that's the universe, man. I mean, the more people that come at you hard, that's the universe testing. Okay. I know you want to get there, but show me how bad you want to get there, because I ain't gonna make it easy for you. And then you see over time, I think it was P.T. Barnum said, uh, nobody ever made a difference by being like everybody else. Mm, yeah. And that, that just takes me back again to being different. And when you're different, people are going to hate on you. But, dude, you know, I love it. I mean, that's what I live for. And then you, uh, you have that play that a tribe of people around you that feel the same or think the same. And then that's the one that can give you the strength to yeah. move on to the next level. That's why your thing is growing so much. You have a, a tribe of people who have a similar vision, uh, uh, right? And something that they believe in. And that, that's really important to know that you're never going to get to an end point of success alone. You have to start with yourself, but you can't get there by yourself. I'll tell you, that is so profound for you to say that right this particular second, because <clears throat> this is what's been going on in my world. And I was just thinking this. I keep telling uh, you met Allison, right? And of course, you know, Phyllis mm -hmm. and Ruben was there from Costa Rica and um, Julie. Um, so these people are, first of all, they're great people. They're really knowledgeable. They want to make a change. Um, but I, I, I have designed the program, but I can't do it alone anymore because I just can't. Mm -hmm. Because if I do, it won't be as good as it can be if I have help. And I want it to be a kick-ass program that really makes a freaking difference. We want people moving better faster, mm -hmm. too, like in less time. Instead of two hours to move better, let's make it 10 minutes. I mean, seriously, there's so many things I'm learning, like from you and some other people out there. And what Emily Splickles helped with, with some of these, uh, this, this here has been an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, movement disorders and improving movement. And then we can get the moving better so you can do more of like the things that I've learned from you. I mean, it's just great, right? We just have to wake up their nervous system and their brain. But the bottom line is, I need my program to be kick-ass, best shit. I can possibly make it, and it's not gonna happen alone. I can't do it. I don't have that knowledge. So I have Allison researching things. Phyllis came to your thing. We meet tomorrow because she's going to, uh, she's going to teach me uh, highlight <laughs> automatic. Yeah, and then eventually I'll make it to the course. Right now, I'm like, I have to send them because because uh, I actually just need to stay home for a few days. <laughs> so uh, you're dominating the world right now, so you got to rest a little bit. Yeah. But I love it. So this whole this team concept, this is actually going to help. I mean, yeah, me, but it's a, it's an us thing. In fact, my my new thing I just came up with it this this summer. I just I just realized I'm with Allison. I think we were in. San Diego at, at uh, Andy's place, which you're going to be there soon, in November. Yeah. I love Andy. And Jackie was there. And we're like, Allison and I, we're, we're out eating dinner or something. I'm like, it ain't about me. It's about we. Yeah. It ain't about me. It's about we because we are who's doing this shit together. We are the ones who are going to help people. I can help people, but we can help more people together it's a together thing it's not about me but i'm yep. sure glad to be a part of this journey man it's been freaking awesome and it's it's only just beginning really it's just beginning i uh i love your uh so so many of the things that you said i can relate to it's just so 
uh, it's funny is, is I, most of the people, well, most, a lot of people my age, 57, we graduated like 30, whatever years ago, 39 years ago from high school. A lot of them are getting ready to retire. And that's mm-hmm. cool. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know. I can't even think in that spectrum. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm just getting started with this stuff. It's just, well, yeah. You know, when you get excited like that, it's like, okay, I'm doing the right thing because I'm so excited every day. And we actually play is a real important thing that we do now too. in in life, sure. I love it. And, yeah. yeah. I, it, and what I've discovered along the way is that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Very few people have found something in their life that they truly in, enjoy or, yeah. um, you know, that they have. Most people are, are feeling lost. And then, you know, they're kind of like, I'm just going to work until I can retire and then I'm going to start living. But you find that a lot of times when people do retire, they, they are so lost that they actually have a higher rate of depression and anxiety and suicide from when, when they'd have no purpose whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, that's, that's really, really important. And, and that happened to me as well. Like I, I was struggling most of my life to try to find a sense of myself. I was experimenting with a lot of different things. I wasn't afraid to, to go out and do something different than A, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Because a part of, I tell my sons this all the time, part of knowing what you want to do in life is knowing what you don't want to do. And the only way you're going to know that is to, put your, is to put your foot in the water. Sometimes you walk in. Most of the time you just freaking jump in. And then you'll say, oh, that I didn't want to do that or I know that. And then all of a sudden you end up kind of innately finding your path. And, you know, you can't be afraid when you're along the line of, uh, to success of, of making a ton of mistakes. And it's part of this successful process. And, we know it innately now listen people tell it to us all the time but it's not uh, an easy one to embrace because nobody likes to feel vulnerable nobody likes to fail and but you quickly learn that the quicker you fail the faster you learn than everybody else right Mm -hmm. and then the brain kind of craves all that kind of stuff that's why movement is so important it's the classic what was einstein or somebody really smart said nothing happens until something moves and like, you know, I mean, I, I can wish for success all I want, yeah. but still got to get out there and make uh, stuff happen when you do it. And uh, yeah, that, that was the same for me. I, I was going to be a lawyer. I went to school because I was going to study law. And then I, I studied political science. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not really feeling that. But I had the courage to leave. And then I went out and worked for a while and I worked in corporate America, then I worked in retail. And I thought, you know, I like to cook. Maybe I'm going to be a chef. So I got accepted to the Culinary Institute in New York. I was going to be a chef. And I'm like, this is fun. But I worked in a couple of restaurants and I'm like, I love cooking, but I hate the industry. Good. Lord, I'm not doing this. Right. And every single person I ran into was a chef was miserable and said, don't do it. And I'm like, I should listen to this. <laughs> and then. Then I got out and working again, and then that's when I found chiropractic. And chiropractic was a different path, but it's not something that honestly that it hit me in the heart. Like it grabbed me by the heart and led me. And I think that's one of the reasons why I struggled early on is that I was I had I had like one foot on the right path, but not both. And that's when I came across and finally discovered human movement and the role of movement. And then that that kicked it off. Because I'm going to be 52 at the end of this month, and I didn't start this stuff honestly until about 10 years ago. And people say to me all the time, and it sounds like they're saying it to you, like, "Dude, I mean, how do you have the energy for this? I look around, you're in another airport, you're in a different country, you never stop." And I'm like, "Dude, because I was lost most of my life. I've got so much catching up to do with yeah. with that with that passion and that love." And I think to myself, I try not to beat myself up. I think, you know, imagine how it would have been if I came across and knew this shit at 2021, but that very rarely happens. And uh, it's never too late. It's only too late until you're dead. Right. And that's why I tell these kids of today, it's okay. And don't, don't stress because like when they're in high school, they want you to pick your major already. Like you want to do the rest of your life. Like, dude, I got no freaking idea what I want to do the rest of my life. I'll just pick something and then I'll start. But that kind of stress already of 
you can't be successful unless you figure out what you want to do now. That's bullshit. Yeah, that that's a lot of stress to put on somebody 18 years, 17 years old, whatever, 16. It's, I see it's, it. Yeah. My own kids, right? And the expectations. Got so much, so right? much anxiety going on. He's not enjoying life anymore. I don't even get me started on academia because that'll be a whole nother podcast. But Wait, we could do one on that. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, I don't think they breed success at all. It's tough. I, uh, I I also get those questions a lot. I go every time I look or see or somewhere else around the world, and then how do you do it? I said, you know, actually, same. It's the same thing. I said I did something I didn't want to do for so long because I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was good at what I was doing. I just didn't enjoy it very much. Mm -hmm. Actually really didn't like it at all for a few years at the end, being a drummer. I never wanted to be a drummer. I just ended up, it came easy and I'm good at it. I'm not great, but I'm good. I'm yeah. not got a lot of work, right? It's, it's easy. It's like, well, this is easy. I'll just do this until I figure out what I want to be when I grow up. So basically, uh, I like what I do so much. I love what I do so much. I don't even, it's like I don't have a job, kind of, because I just go and do shit that I love. And that's where the energy comes from. Actually, the energy comes from this. The energy comes from somebody learns a Angelus. I'll see Angelus on Saturday because I'm going to stay with her and her family, her husband and daughter at their house in Monterey, wow. Mexico. She's 40 something, 42 years old, I think. Earlier this year, teaching my uh, Parkinson's modified rolling patterns, which really is like 80% the same as what you do. Thank you for this, because this is where it gets real good, is where she rolls over for the first time in five years. Mm -hmm. because, uh, she's just 37 years old the last time she rolled over by herself. And then she, so what happened there, this is where the energy comes from. I'm sorry I'm turning this towards me for one minute. It's because of your influence on me is so huge. And I'm grateful. And you're, you're, I'm helping people because of stuff that you have taught me. So, right, so she walks in. With her husband kind of dragged her there. It's like, you're going to this thing because this guy's supposed to be good and he knows something. Mm -hmm. so she walks in feeling defeated, rolls over, walks out an unstoppable fighter. Mm. That is the shit. That. Yeah. That gives me energy. It also gives me like when I don't feel like doing something like working out or whatever, I like go out, well, you know what, I can, so I should, because shame on me, because other people won't ever be able to, they give anything to do it, so get your ass in gear. But the energy comes from that, those results, and watching people change heart, mind, everything. Yeah, well, I mean, think about her. We're talking about success, right? Mm-hmm. That's a huge success win for her. Oh, and then huge. Now she walked. So what you got was a nonlinear effect, which means, okay, I'm thinking I'm just going to roll over and then be a big deal. But she stood up and it was almost like she was a different person. That's a nonlinear event. And that's why uh, I think it's really important that I relate to people that are listening that feel stuck, right? And some people think, well, it's easy for you to say you're already there. Like I'm, I'm stuck in a situation where you know, I've got responsibilities, right? which is life, right? I mean, I can't quit my job. I, you know, it's great that I can go find my passion, but that's not realistic for a lot of people. Like, I got to put food in my kid's mouth, right? And like, that's true, yes. But then we go back to what I stated before about Peterson, just be a better version of yourself today than where you were yesterday. And then maybe you've got to go to a job that you hate. But you can turn that around too. And that you can choose to try to make it a little bit better. Maybe it's just one little thing and say, listen, I, I read this in a book once. A guy was miserable going and just uh, sweeping floors or doing stuff, a beginning job. But I think it was Starbucks or a coffee house. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to go in the next day. I know it sucks, but at least I've got a job. And I'm going to go in there. I'm going to be the best damn broom cleaner person you've ever seen on this freaking planet. And I'm going to start to interact with the people there and maybe have a genuine smile, which means the corners of your eyes wrinkle. That's how you know it's genuine, <clears throat> which that, by the way, relates to changing your vagus nerve, which puts you in a heightened state of uh, you know, success anyway. Mm -hmm. And 
he just did that, right? And then, first of all, people look at that, and then the world takes notice, man, right? Your physiology changes because you're not you're getting out of your pity party. But then people, other people notice that, and then you realize that like the energy of a room changes. And then he fast forwarded. I think it was six months later. Uh, you know, the management took notice. People took notice. He had more friends. He got promoted up to going behind the thing. You know, imagine that's success. And it didn't start with, I'm coming in here, man, because I want to work and I want to get behind here. And they're there, son of a bitch. How come I can't get there? All he did was focus on the success of changing one thing for the better in a situation that he thought he couldn't control. That's the thing. You think you can't control it because you do. You, you actually say, I can't quit my job because my kid would starve. Well, actually, you could quit your job. You could see that your kid would starve, but it's your choice. You're choosing not to. It's true. <laughs> right? So then why don't you choose how you have to go towards that misery? Because it's all a perception anyway. Do you see how this, this mindset of success isn't about I'm driving my Ferrari and I'm on lifestyles of the rich and famous, which is dating me because people have no idea what I'm talking about. That's from a long time ago. Robin but, Leach. Robin Leach. Robin yeah. Leach. Yeah, <laughs> the original one. I don't know if he's still alive anymore, but I used to watch that show because it was that fascinating. Was great, right? And, and it's really funny, like, how you, you learn to grow into this. I remember when I was in chiropractic school, uh, I had a picture hanging on the wall when I'm studying. I'm in first trimester, you're getting hammered by basics and you just don't know whether you're up or down, left or right, and you're doubting why you're there. And I had this big, you know, poster with some graphic art that's typical for the, you know, 90s. And it said benefits of success on it. And what it was, was it had like eight different cars of all these Lamborghini, poor stuff like that, and like a garage. So the, the idea of I'm going to be studying this and doing this so I can get that. Mm -hmm. I look back on it now. And I wouldn't have anything like that at all. <laughs> you know, what I would put up there right now is uh, definitely I would put a picture of my family up there. But, you know, I would put up uh, people. Mm, right? like yeah, people. totally. Yeah. That's the definition of success because you realize, see, I mean, <clears throat> we're all in this stuff together. And if you can do maybe a little bit of something to make the world a tiny bit less miserable. Mm -hmm. that's a big win <laughs> yeah so yeah you really got to be careful the stuff you put out there too like you taking that moment when you're on facebook you've got an opportunity right here when you're going to comment on something that one i can make a comment on this thing <clears throat> that can motivate this person that can elevate this person and really touch their heart or i can put one that might damage them for life mm -hmm. that's really powerful and people don't think about it and doing it like that especially for the kids of today you know i see it all the time and it makes me really sad yeah because you don't you know especially if you don't know a person but you <clears throat> think you might know something about them based on what they're posting and all that but you don't know about their personal life their family life they're they're growing up they're violations they've uh, they've been violated where i mean you know it's just so much stuff and plus then there's the written word right because sometimes written word is misconstrued for something it's not because of a typo or or we read and listen a lot of times uh through our filters and yeah. you can okay. take a short message and say oh well that person didn't write a long message and it seems like they're being rude but maybe they're just uh Maybe they have Parkinson's and they can't type well. I mean, you know what I mean? I, but they didn't, yeah, you, you didn't know it on the other side. Or maybe they're in a hurry or whatever. So, Well, yeah, that's why you're, you're taking apart the, more the ability for us as human beings to be able to look at someone and hear someone makes a difference on your, your response to them. So some of the stuff I'm reading is very interesting is that your stress response goes up when you can't look in somebody's eyes or look at their face or hear their voice because that gives you an idea about their intention. That's the only way you're going to know their intention. Mm -hmm. And you can misconstrue things in a written word, like you said, because I don't have a benchmark. Plus, 
you're also in a point when you are doing the writing, you are removed from the threat of me kicking your ass based on what you just told me. <laughs> and that, that also removes a big filter and a barrier, right? Yeah, and that's, that's true. Yeah. That, that goes back to you know, how we relate to each other as, um, as human beings, right? Yeah. So it, I think that's a big thing that's going to, um, now, because part of being success also is being, uh, I mean, you can get there two different ways, right? I mean, you, you can be a real jerk and get to success, but you can also be amicable or friendly, but not let, not, not be a doormat either mm -hmm. when you get there. And then it's really important when you fall into the trap of comparing yourself to others, because you only have one context of comparison. So for instance, like I was doing this to myself early on when I'm trying to get better at public speaking. I'm looking at somebody do a public speaking and then I'm like, wow, I mean, that's really good. They must be successful. You know, I'm, I really suck right now. Um, and, and I trying to be better. And you think that, you know, that person is way better than you and successful at that, but that's only one context because you have to think to yourself, I can't just base my success on that because maybe I'm going home to a relationship where I am completely happy and bliss and I have a wonderful support structure. Maybe this person is going back to something that you don't know about that's an absolute toxicity and they have maybe a loved one is dying or this. And we have this bubble of success that we think everything is great in that person's life. But then you, when you see other people come out and say, well, I'm really successful, but I have depression or anxiety, you know, you realize that, well, that's a human being too. And they have to go through the same things that I do. And we, when we see a celebrity do that, it's almost like, wow, right? You know, it, but we end up going back and we, we forget it. So it's very important, I think, cycling back is that you need to be careful of what your definition of success really means and also the area that you're talking about. That's, yeah, all that stuff is so important. Um, you just, I'm just, so many things going on in my head right now. You, uh, <laughs> yeah, how, how we see somebody, it, a lot of times we don't, most of the time probably we don't have the full context because we don't know what's going on in their life unless we know them. And then we still may not know everything, right? So it's, uh, but I've had somebody say once that you're not seeing somebody how they are, you're seeing them how you are, right? Right, exactly, uh, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. Totally. It's uh so you gotta remember that. You gotta think about that. That's a mind bender right there. Yeah. Right. So I have a lot of times when people if you think about it, there's a lot of toxicity in your life, right? And then just negativity and stress and pessimism. Everybody you come across is like that. Maybe you should just look in the mirror and see maybe I'm the one that's attracting all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, like exactly. like like attracts like. And then you you don't see it though, because you're in it. Mm -hmm. Cause that's the whole role of the body is to adapt to its environment. And then your quote unquote abnormal is now your new normal. And then your body has to find a new set point for misery. And I see it all the time with pain. This is like, you're, you're down here where you feel awful all the time. You forget what it's like to feel good anymore because your reference point of good has been changed by your body. Yes. because It has to, if it doesn't change it, well, then you'll probably go crazy, right? And that's why if you show somebody just a little sliver of kindness or support or enthusiasm that's authentic, yes, that, that, can, be the, that can be their rolling pattern on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they stand up and then boom, everything changes. Yeah, it's so powerful, man. It, that the potential is so powerful. And when, when it actually happens, I mean, that's where you see, I see lives changing. And, yeah. you know, there's a ripple effect to all this too, which I know you're fully aware of, but when a, when a caregiver doesn't have to push and pull somebody to get them to roll, they feel better too. And then the other, the people in the family and the uh, friends, loved ones, coworkers, whatever, there's a ripple effect. We had another lady here recently. Oh my God, it's just, she came in uh, uh, walking on the balls of her feet. Her disease pathology 
it's it's not just Parkinson's. There's other stuff going on too. Um, well, we we got her. She got she got walking really looking real good real quick with uh, the Naboso stuff, right? So then her spirit changes. She starts running after about 15 minutes. We couldn't stop her, so we just let her go. This this lady now is running almost every day. And she's back to work. She's a doctor. She's a, a chemist, a PhD. So she's back to work. Mm-hmm. She sent me a video. I got off the plane in San Francisco, and I, I got a message. And it's her in her lab coat, walking almost perfectly normally. Major improvement from uh, the day I saw her the first time. Holding a cup of coffee, hot coffee, not spilling it. Back to work. And you know what, you know what else is interesting, too? You talk about so that's that's one type of uh, success, right? I'm I'm seeing this as uh, success in, in in a in a way, right? When we say uh, put up, you know, you had cars on the wall too. I did too. I had a lot of different things, and but people. I was thinking people too. When you said put people up on the wall, I put people, groups of people, the people who I've who have met who. I'm actually friends with them now all over the world and monitoring their progress mm. as a friend. I just want to know how are you doing? How are you doing? Because as they keep doing better and better, I, I feel they're happier and I'm happy too. We have some of these people now because they're moving more, mm-hmm. getting their sense of smell back. Mm. Because when you get BDNF going in the brain, which comes from, movement and elevating the heart rate to a degree uh, frequently that growth factor is created by the brain and the science shows that it gives birth to brain cells in the hippocampus and the olfactory bulbs so when memories improve memory improves since the smell comes back i'm getting a little off track here but then again i'm not because all of this comes into this world of making the world a better place and all I do is just deliver information. I don't really actually do anything other than that. But well, hold on. This is something that's really important to say. Um, yeah, I learned a long time ago through teaching and, and trying to help people uh, understand things. And information in and of itself uh, is inherently meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. Until you give it meaning, mm-hmm. until you give it context, so you're not really deliver just delivering information by what you do. Well, I mean, I you, I kind of know you, that sometimes it's how I I'm interrupting for one second. It's kind of feel like, well, I just told you this, you just did it, and it worked. I'm so happy, but I know there's more to it. But keep going, please. Well, I'm saying that because I know you know it, but when you talk like that. I want you to I want you to double down know it because it's, you're not just delivering information. It's it's the meaning that you're you're giving to these people from the information and how <clears throat> you've taken it and combined it together. So, you know, that that in and of itself people can get um it's a it's a really key factor for becoming successful too if you don't mind i expand on one one second oh, please please do. Uh, because you know we hear information right and sometimes we hear information lots of times but we hear it and then once we hear it we just stop hearing it anymore which means that oh i've already heard that or i've already read that or somebody said that and then you don't pay attention to it anymore it's almost like you devalue it in a way because you're not teaching me anything new <clears throat> but it's not the information, it's the meaning of the information, which means that if you teach me something today, right, and you and I learn it a year from now, don't discount it because you're in context, you should be a different human being a year ago than you are now, and you're going to get a different meaning from it. So I've had these self-help books, right? Oh, yeah. like I've got countless ones, and I've, I've read them. But maybe it's the 10 years later that you know somebody else will say it in a different way and then the way they say it like boom i get it or like okay now i'm reading it i'm like now i get it what here it hits me but if i just went like "Ah, i know that already no big thing right i mean we do that with movement all the time you're like 
once you see a rolling pattern, you're like, oh, you know, you show me a rolling pattern. What's so big about a rolling pattern? Well, everything's big about a rolling pattern. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, God, it's so, so it's powerful. Really for people to know that the information of itself doesn't mean anything. It's the meaning behind the information. Yeah. The, you know, I have to tell you, like with rolling patterns, we, we do it every workshop. And um, so on the occasion, and there are many occasions where there's somebody or a couple people who come in, especially in the larger groups where I have uh, a couple of people helping me to break, break out in these sessions. And we have like a hundred people and things like that. There's always a, a group who can't roll. And I, I've got wood right here. I've got some wood to knock on. Knock on wood, as they say, 100% success in getting people to roll on their own, front to back, back to front, both directions. It may take a while. And when we just have to keep, keep doing it and doing it, we take our sweet time because we're not going to rush through any of this stuff because it's so important. Mm -hmm. And then we see... The look on their face and their partner's face their spouse's face whatever we see major changes going on internally emotionally and mentally and it's the best stuff ever man i love it you know i mean that's just one movement we do rolling is so important though right you my the only thing i ever think i think the only original thought i ever had in my course is the Carl's take me through your day assessment. And it's where we just sit down and I say, take me through your day. You, you open your eyes in the morning. What's your first challenge? Mm -hmm. Oh, rolling over in bed. Oh, getting out of bed. Okay, well, let's, let's work on conquering those. Mm. And you'll start your day off better, you know? So that's, uh, it's been amazing, man. Yeah, that's really, really powerful. You know, but that, that's something that, you know, you start to take for granted, right? And first of all, the ability to roll over in bed, but also, sure. you know, I've traveled to teach a lot around in movement and sometimes we, uh, we dismiss the basics and the fundamentals of just like, well, no big deal, right? Or, you know, doesn't everybody know that? First of all, hardly nobody knows it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, your, your concept of, of the world changes when you understand something. You think everybody else knows it or understands it. That's called the curse of knowledge, which will sidetrack you on success quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, but that also takes us back to success. It's, it's the basics and the fundamentals. How well you master those influences how well you'll do everything else afterwards and i always reference the classic movie from the 80s karate kid right oh yeah it's the wax on wax off you know paint the fence sand the floor it's those oh man do i really have to do this i mean blah 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 and then i'll realize that once you know those then everything else spiders off of that so that's why you, you know, with success, when you feel like you're starting on something that might be trivial, mm -hmm. that's the creamy filling right there. That's, that's the basic. Because with rolling, we know that if you can roll, it's going to change how you do everything else when you stand up and you start walking, right? So because it's a fundamental mixture. Mm -hmm. And it's, just, it's the same thing with some of those uh, daily habit stuff that you do. And one of the keys to success, in my opinion, is that you do on a daily basis is just start being nicer to yourself. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's big. I mean, think of, I say, listen, if you take stock of how you talk to yourself and ask yourself, if you said what you say to yourself out loud to somebody else, what would that reaction be? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Right? And yeah. You're like, yeah, you're kind of right. I'd probably punch myself in the face or I'd want nothing to do with me. But I'm like, well, your body, your cells of your body don't want anything to do with you, brother. Why would they? Yeah. Right? So it all starts from that energetic standpoint of thought. And listen, the world's a tough place. It's full of malevolence and it's hard. It's going to kick your ass. That's part of its job, honestly. But if you can uh, have little things like hopefully today that people watch to have a little foothold, little thing to grab on with your fingers mm -hmm. while you're climbing that cliff, you know, 
bonus point of success. If you're not dead, you can take another step forward. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, perspective is so important, right? How we look at things. It's just, but I, I forget where it was. I don't know if it was a book or an interview I was reading, watching, where uh, they were comparing success, uh, two people comparing success. So the question of the, mo I think it was a TV show or something. The moderator is uh, asking this gentleman, you know, what's success? He's talking all about his business, and blah, 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 blah. And it's Tony Robbins. That's what it was. And uh, he's talking about how, what, what would take for, to have a successful day. The other guy's like, well, I woke up. That's a good start. And like yeah. six feet under, you know, it's like, I'm not dead. This is cool. <laughs> That's a bonus plan right there. It's I'm totally, sure. yeah, yeah. Check that box, you know, and yeah. what, what's what we embrace is that our greatest lessons in life uh, and our growth comes from our greatest suffering. Um, and you need to have those episodes of stress and suffering because otherwise you have nothing to compare it to of what happiness is or what joy yes. is. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, listen, I know it sounds nuts, but if you were happy and everything was perfect every day of your life, you'd be miserable and you'd want to die because it's, it loses that really quick. It's the new car feel, right? And then like a year later, it's trash, right? I mean, it's just, <laughs> yeah well it's true there's a guy uh bob proctor's a guy i've followed on and off oh, sure. wow. yeah I, I actually went to a thing with him uh, of his three-day thing a few years ago in toronto it's really That's really great. good exactly. and you know he talks about you have to have the opposite to appreciate anything you know you can't have up without down in without out front without back top without mm -hmm. bottom happiness without sadness joy without um whatever the opposite of that would be agony misery so you do need a baseline for all these things right we have to have a baseline in, in, in pain you know i i know i because when i was going through that hip thing i remember when you you helped me uh i i hadn't realized how i re i adjusted my new baseline to a, a norm that shouldn't be and i felt so damn good afterwards I. I was just, I couldn't believe it. I let myself go like that. And I, 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 I 15 miles the next day. <laughs> I did a lot of stuff the next day, man. I was like up on the top of this big hill doing a live <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> I know. I remember I'm like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I paid a little bit of a price for that, but it, 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 uh, it worked out okay. Well, I mean, that goes back to Eastern medicine and philosophy, which I've been following forever with martial arts. And it's yin and yang. It's balance. Yeah. It's the mess. It's a mess between the two. And then that in West in Western medicine, they call that homeostasis. Mm -hmm. so trying to find that uh, set point. <clears throat> but the only way you become stronger is from from the stress, from the hard knocks. You know. I mean, that's how you make steel. I mean, you just knock it, bring it, bang it, stress it, and boom, it gets really, really strong. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, those the uh, Eastern medicine is. You know, I love it because they've known stuff for thousands of years that science is just kind of catching up to you and validating, which is really awesome to see happening, especially in relationship to the to the brain and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. That is awesome, man. Well, let's um, before we go here, I'll ask you one, two questions. First of all. Mm. What can we expect from uh, Stop Chasing Pain in the future? What's going on? Because I know you've, you've always got something going on, so I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, well, you'll definitely have more of the crazy shit path stuff. Good, good. And that I can you, always... You're teaching with, uh, I read a post a little while back. I remember texting you about this too. Stop Chasing Symptoms. Like, totally genius, man. I love that. But the, you're teaching a course with, is it Stuart Gillespie? Yeah, my friend, Dr. Stuart Gillespie, who's a chiropractor, but he's an expert in functional medicine. Okay. Um, yeah, he was very helpful and instrumental in helping me return back to health from <clears throat> an autoimmune disorder that, that got me. And then we decided to put something together because I wanted to 
share those things with with others and i'm really excited to launch that uh in november in san diego and then we'll do a couple more throughout the in, in the world and uh of course you know i'm really really big into my uh, lymphatic system yeah uh, yeah course program that is really taking off as well and you know i mean i'll i kind of came to those things that i put together by following the crazy shit that happened, you know so yeah no it's it's great i have to uh well phyllis is going to debrief me on your course last week that she went to uh, tomorrow but I'll, I'll get to that course at one point because i really want to take it hands on yeah. well, you come uh, you'll be my guest man you know whenever uh, you want to go on you just let me know okay well thank you thank you very much um so my last question is this mm. any final or uh, any just in closing any words of wisdom uh, advice you want to give to the people who are watching and listening. Holy cow! I don't know if I have any left. Uh, <laughs> I didn't tell you. It's not fair. I didn't say I was going to ask that question, but I am asking that question. Yeah. Because yeah. If you, one, gonna, if you had one thing to say, what would it be? I think I can do that. Small <laughs> becomes small becomes really really big. So I have a phrase that you know, as far as I know, I've coined it so i'm gonna take it that i call ltas ltas that stands for little tiny action steps <clears throat> and that's the key just small little steps can add up and be a tsunami of change and just do that right and it doesn't have to be huge but you'll find you know that small daily thing at the end of just like one month like I tell people now, just try to commit to something that we talked about for one month. Maybe wake up in the morning and just, you know, say, you know, I love you. I love you to yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll feel a little ridiculous in the beginning. I know it because most people do. But then by sure. the end of a end of a month, you're gonna say to yourself, "Well, this LTA shit kind of works, man." Like I get it, right? And then all of a sudden, your steps become bigger and bigger and bigger because you feel more empowered or quote unquote, you feel more successful. So my takeaway tip is small becomes really, really big and little tiny action steps will make you a hashtag beast mode badass monster. <laughs> All right, man, I love that. I love that. So uh, if you don't mind, just stay on with me when I, uh, after I say goodbye, just for a minute. Um, so um, sure thank well. you, thank you, Dr. Perry, you are, uh, you're actually one of the most generous people I know too. You've helped me so much. Uh, when my book comes out and I'm almost done, I am so uh, honored that you wrote the foreword. It's absolutely beautiful. It's just- Honor for me. Thank you for asking. So, uh, man, it's a, it's a hell of a job writing a book though. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, man, I'm like two years overdue for mine. <laughs> oh, I was, yeah, we're getting close here. So um, anyway, yeah. so- um, I just want to thank you again for your friendship, your support, for taking this time uh, sharing with my uh, viewers and my uh, listeners. So um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, this has been a great hour for me, man. I always pick up so much when I talk with you, my friend. All right, peeps. Uh, have a great day. Thanks again for watching. Take care. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.